I'm Matthew Quick, author of The Silver Linings Playbook, which was recently shortlisted for the Penn Hemingway Award. The Weinstein Company currently owns the movie rights, and David O. Russell has written a phenomenal screenplay that we're really excited about. In a moment, I'm going to read to you from my book from the chapter called Tiffany's Head Floating Over the Waves. And probably all you need to know before I begin reading is that my protagonist and narrator, Pat Peoples, at the beginning of the book, he's released from a neural health facility. And when he leaves the mental institution, um, almost as a coping mechanism, he develops this philosophy that his life is a movie produced by God. And if he becomes a good enough man, if he practices being kind rather than right, and if he becomes physically fit, he believes that God will return his estranged wife to him, therefore giving the movie of his life uh, a happy ending. After a brief discussion about whether the tide is coming in or out, Veronica picks a dry patch and tries to spread out the blanket while Ronnie begins digging the umbrella spike into the sand. But there is a breeze and Veronica has some trouble as the wind keeps folding the blanket over. If it were anyone but Veronica, I would grab a corner and help, but I do not want to get yelled at. So I wait for instructions before I do anything. Tiffany does the same, but Veronica fails to ask for help. Maybe some sand gets kicked up or something because Emily starts screaming and rubbing her eyes. Nice, Tiffany says. Veronica immediately attends to Emily, telling her to blink, demonstrating what to do, but Emily only screams even louder. I can't take a crying baby right now, Tiffany adds. Make her stop crying, Veronica. Would you please make her? Remember what Dr. Lily said? What did we talk about this morning, Veronica says over her shoulder, shooting Tiffany a serious look before turning her attention back to Emily. So now we're talking about my therapist in front of Pat. You fucking bitch, Tiffany says, shaking her head. And then she is walking away from us quickly. Christ, Veronica says. Ronnie, can you handle Emily? Ronnie nods solemnly, and then Veronica is running after Tiffany, saying, Tiff, come back, come on. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. Ronnie flushes Emily's eyes with bottled water, and after 10 minutes or so, she stops crying. We get the blanket spread out under the shade of the umbrella, weighting the corners down with the cooler, our flip-flops and sandals, and Emily's super stroller, but Veronica and Tiffany do not come back. After every inch of Emily's skin is coated with sunscreen, Ronnie and I play with her down at the water's edge. She likes running after the waves as they recede. She likes digging in the sand, and we have to watch to make sure she does not eat the sand, which seems weird to me, because why would anyone want to eat sand? Ronnie carries Emily out into the ocean, and we all float over the waves for a time. I ask if we should be worried about Tiffany and Veronica, and Ronnie says, no, they're just having a therapy session somewhere on the beach. They'll be back soon. I don't like the way he emphasizes the word therapy as if therapy were some sort of ridiculous idea. But I don't say anything. After we dry off, we lie down on the blanket, Ronnie and Emily in the shade and me in the sun. I doze off pretty quickly. When I open my eyes, Ronnie's face is next to mine. He's sleeping. I feel a tap on my shoulder, and when I roll over, I see that Emily has walked around the blanket. She smiles at me and says, Pap, let daddy sleep, I whisper, and then pick her up and carry her down to the water. For a while, we sit and dig a small hole in the wet sand with our hands, but then Emily stands and chases the foam of a receding wave, laughing and pointing. Want to go swimming, I ask her. And she nods once, so I scoop her up into my arms and begin to wade out into the water. The surf has picked up some, and the waves have a lot more height, so I quickly walk past the breakers to where the water is up to my chest. Emily and I begin to float over the swells. As the waves grow in size, I have to jump and kick really hard to keep both of our heads above water. But Emily loves it and begins squealing and laughing and clapping her hands every time we float up. This goes on for a good 10 minutes, and I am so happy. I kiss her chubby cheeks over and over. Something about Emily makes me want to float over waves with her for the rest of my life, and I decide that when a part-time is done, I will make a daughter with Nikki ASAP because nothing has made me even this close to happy since a part time began. The swells get bigger. I lift Emily up and put her on my shoulders so she will not have her face splashed by the waves, and her squeals seem to suggest that she likes being so high up in the air. We float up. We float down. We are so happy. We are so, so happy. But then I hear someone screaming, Pat! 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 I turn and see that Veronica is running very quickly down the beach, with Tiffany trailing far behind. I worry that maybe something is wrong, so I start to make my way in. 
The waves are pretty big now, and I have to take Emily down from my shoulders and hold her against my chest to ensure her safety. But soon we are able to negotiate our way back to Veronica, who is now running into the surf. When I get closer, Veronica seems to be very upset. Emily starts to scream and reach for her mother. What the hell are you doing, Veronica says to me when I hand Emily over to her. I'm just swimming with Emily, I say. Veronica's screaming must have woken up Ronnie because he has run down to meet us. What happened? You let Pat take Emily out into the ocean, Veronica says. And by the way she says my name, it's obvious she does not want Emily to be left alone with me because she thinks I'm going to hurt Emily somehow, which is unfair, especially since Emily only started crying when she heard Veronica screaming. So really, Veronica was the one who upset her own daughter. What did you do to her, Ronnie says to me. Nothing, I say, we were only swimming. What were you doing, Veronica says to Ronnie. I must have fallen asleep, and Jesus Christ, Ronnie, you left Emily alone with him? The way Veronica says him, Emily crying, Ronnie accusing me of doing something awful to his daughter, the sun burning my bare chest and back, Tiffany watching now. Suddenly I feel as though I might explode. I definitely feel an episode coming on, so before I blow up, I do the only thing I can think of. I start running down the beach away from Veronica and Ronnie and Emily and the crying and the accusations. I run as fast as I can and suddenly I realize that now I am crying, probably because I was only swimming with Emily and it felt so right and I was trying to be good and I thought I was being good and I let my best friend down and Veronica screamed at me and it's not fair because I've been trying so hard and how long can this fucking movie last and how much more do I need to improve myself and Tiffany passes me. She runs by me like a blur. Suddenly, only one thing matters. I need to pass her. I start running faster and catch up to her, but she picks up her speed and we run side by side for a time until I find that gear women do not have, and I blow by her and maintain my man speed for a minute or so before I slow down and allow her to catch up with me. We jog side by side on the beach for a long time, neither of us saying a word. What feels like an hour passes before we turn around, and what feels like another hour passes before we see Ronnie and Veronica's umbrella. But before we reach them, Tiffany veers into the ocean. I follow her, running directly into the waves, and the salt water feels so cool on my skin after a long run. Soon we are in too deep to stand, and Tiffany's head is floating over the waves, which have calmed down considerably. Her face is a little tan, and her hair hangs dark and wet and natural, and I see freckles on her nose that were not there earlier that morning, so I swim over to her. A wave lifts me up, and when I come down over the other side, I am surprised that our faces are so very close. For a second, Tiffany reminds me so much of Nikki, I worry we might accidentally kiss. But Tiffany swims a few feet away from me before this happens, and I am thankful. Her toes come up out of the water, and she begins to float, facing the horizon. I lean back, stare at the line where sky meets water, allow my toes to rise, and float next to Tiffany for a long time, neither of us saying anything. We walk back to the blanket. Emily is sleeping with a fist in her mouth, and Veronica and Ronnie are lying down, holding hands in the shade. When we stand over them, they squint and smile at us like nothing bad had happened earlier. How was your run? Ronnie asks. We want to go home now, Tiffany says. Why, Ronnie says, sitting up. We haven't even eaten our lunch. Pat, you really want to go home? Veronica says nothing. I look up at the sky. No clouds at all. Nothing but blue. Yeah, I do, I tell him. And then we are in the minivan driving back to Collingswood. Thank you.